back here after a hot, long summer. Your garden may not be looking its best anymore. But even in the peak of summer, it can still be as colorful and lush as it is in the spring. Garden guy Del Kay is outside. He's talking about plants that thrive in the heat. We need this right now to color up our gardens because, I don't know, mine's looking kind of chintzy. Yeah, <laughs> same. <laughs> I, I like that word, chintzy. <laughs> chintzy. chintzy. Yeah. So what kind you know, of flowers uh, you, are you talking you about? You mentioned the heat of... Well, you mentioned the heat of summer and sometimes, of course, maybe you go on vacation, maybe you skip a day of watering, all of a sudden all that heat, continual beating down on your plants can take its toll, particularly in containers. And you might have even lost some plants or maybe your hanging basket has maybe died from uh, lack of water. So that doesn't mean you can't still enjoy summer. And there's lots, actually lots of summer left. It's always a little bit unnerving about this time when there's back to school commercials and all that kind of stuff. But it really is only early August and all through August, September are great months for growing. So there's still time to maybe refresh those planters with some of these ideas. And when, when we talk about planters and different types of plants, there's actually multiple seasons that garden centers or growers will actually grow for. Uh, really early in the spring, of course, there's pansies, then there are all the spring bedding plants. And there is that little season that's kind of like the summer annuals. And that's what we're going to focus on now. These aren't leftovers from spring. They're actually growing just for this time of year, just in case you need to refresh those planters. But as I was um, laying in bed last night, I was thinking, you know, another good idea that you could do, we'll get to the bedding plants in a little bit. The other thing that you could do is incorporate some perennials, particularly those that attract butterflies, into one of those spots where maybe you've got a dead plant or maybe you want to refresh a planter. We're looking at comb flowers here, and they are absolutely bang up for attracting butterflies to your garden. And you could pop that into your pot, and then as we get towards like the end of September, they can transfer into your garden. So if you're looking for something that can quickly pop into a container um, that will freshen it up and then go into the garden, cone flowers, then there's also this raspberry, manada, yarrow, and even sedums, really good for attracting all the pollinators, particularly butterflies, which are kind of moving through the area at this time. And they're all good choices. And you, you could actually just make your own coneflower container garden like I've done right there, which is kind of a fun thing to do. I actually did that last year, trans, uh, transplanted them out. Just be careful with the coneflowers when you transplant late in the season. Make sure you add lots of mulch when the ground freezes so they come back in the spring. Now, those bedding plants that are grown, especially at this time of year for summer, as you mentioned, uh, they take the heat really, really well, which is kind of key because we're still kind of in that, that hot stream of weather. Even though this morning, oh my gosh, it felt so nice out this morning um, with all that kind of a little bit cooler air. Almost made me feel about like it's kind of like state fair time. Not that far away too, I guess. Uh, petunias. Um, are great. These are self-cleaning or vegetative uh, petunias, so you don't have to deadhead them. Um, they are really good. You'll find ornamental peppers this time of year at your favorite local garden shop. Dusty Miller is a great highlight plant. It's really not grown for its flowers. It's grown for that silvery foliage, which is kind of nice. Then all the, the little Rebecca, the annual Rebecca's are fun to incorporate. It kind of has that summer feel to them. Coleus over here. This is a, a great plant. Again, grown for its foliage. This one in the back, the variety is actually called Indian Summer. And we're kind of approaching that time, so kind of a fun name to go with the, with the season as well. And most of these annuals will progress right through the late fall here. This particular one, this coleus in front here, is called uh, pineapple, which is fun as well. The, uh, the calabricoa is very similar. It's like a mini petunia. Again, self-cleaning. You don't really have to deadhead those. Uh, so maintenance is uh, super easy at this time of year. Uh, Lantana is another good heat loving. This one actually really loves the heat, even if you'll find that at your favorite local garden shop in the spring as well. Not only do they take the heat really well, but they also do attract hummingbirds. That little tiny, tiny flower, the hummingbird gets its beak right in there, sucks up all that nectar, a little ripper of a plant, and you'll find those in different colors. Oh, look at that. Greg's got a close up of that. You're brilliant, mate. You are really good. You are really good. Uh, also, fountain grass um, is a great. Um, plant for kind of to have towards the back of the planter or if you lost one you can kind of um, add that. Uh, Celosia is another good one. Make sure you use a good potting soil if you are uh, replanting that is really key. The better the soil, the better the plants will grow. And slow, deep waterings are really key. Roots will kind of shoot down into the soil that way. Slow, deep waterings, not like flash in the pan, quick waterings. Your plants will do a lot better that way. Back to you.